So I've already mocked this pretty thoroughly on my community page, but in case you missed it, we do have some official charts from NVIDIA about the performance of the RTX 3050. And it turns out that NVIDIA, it's official, they've confirmed that the RTX 3050 will have better ray tracing performance than graphics cards that can't do ray tracing. It's official. It also has better ray tracing performance than a TI-84 graphing calculator and a Super Nintendo it probably also has better ray tracing performance than Betty White and Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I just clicked on the wrong thing here. There we go. Anyway, the point is that... <laughs> This graph is just silly. So we see that in control with RTX on, um, you know, and then using DLSS at quality mode in 1080p with high game settings, that the RTX 3050 is coming in, it looks like uh, between 60 and 80 and a little bit above the middle. So 70 something frames per second. Now this tells us actually nothing because without another GPU to compare it to and without knowing what section of the game this is, this is irrelevant. We could be literally, the camera could just be smashed up against a wall that's displaying nothing that's difficult for a GPU to run and we have absolutely no idea. So thank you, Nvidia. This tells us absolutely nothing other than the fact that this GPU supports ray tracing, which we already knew. Uh, also, Minecraft RTX on, uh, looks like we're getting over 60 FPS, and Borderlands 3, here's where we actually get some somewhat useful information. Now, in the, uh, <laughs> um, in the, like, also just badly designed graph thing. Um, this caused some confusion because it seems like this, this chart here is saying that this chart is using DLSS in its quality mode, but that does only appear to be when the RTX is on. So that does appear to only be on control in Minecraft, and to my knowledge, actually Borderlands 3 doesn't support DLSS. So in this graph, we're not using DLSS. In those two, we are. These two have ray tracing on, this one doesn't. So hey, I think we can actually get some sort of information out of this Borderlands 3 chart. Now, what do we actually learn from this one? Okay, well, it does look like against a 1650, it does appear to be almost but not quite doubling the performance in whatever scene this happens to be. But here's the thing, if they're only putting literally one game, they're putting one game, one game only on here, do you really think they didn't cherry pick this? So I'm not going to say that this is going to be completely a, a lie or completely out of the realm of possibility, but I would say that whatever this is showing is probably going to be one of the better results versus a 1650 rather than an average or typical result versus a 1650. Now, this could at least get us a rough ballpark on what the non-ray tracing, you know, rasterized non-DLSS performance of the, uh, of the 3050 could be. If we pull up my favorite relative GPU performance chart, let me get my fat head out of the way. Ah! Magics of green screen. Uh, we can see that the 1650, if we set that as our baseline, and according to that graph, we are not quite doubling the performance. So we would scroll down until we're not quite to 200%. So somewhere in this ballpark, right? We can't read too much into this, but it does look like if that chart is, is at all not a complete lie, at least in Borderlands 3, it seems like we might be seeing what we would expect to be something like a GTX 1070 level of performance, maybe 56, uh, but, but probably not 5600 XT or GTX 1080 because that would be actually doubling the performance of the 1650. And again, even on their probably cherry picked results, this doesn't to me look like a complete doubling of the performance, right? Okay, so. I would say that the best we can get out of this is its rasterized performance might put it somewhere in the ballpark of a 1660 Ti, 1660 Super, GTX 1070, which is nothing to sneeze at. And that is, you know, uh, ahead of like what we're seeing from the AMD 6500 XT, although let's talk prices. So we're also seeing that this should be starting at 249, and that means that if you are a bot buying it on launch day, you might see a few models at this price. Most of them, I would imagine, would be 
um, from AIB partners that are actually listed closer to 300 to 350, and then the actual market price that we'll see will be closer to the four to five hundred dollar range. And if it's in the four to five hundred dollar range, you're now complete, competing against the RX 6600 because you can find those regularly in stock on Newegg for about 450. Um, not that hard. I've seen them in stock and sitting there for hours recently, multiple times over the last few weeks. And if you're up against an RX 6600, um, then, well, if you have a, a 1070 level of performance, then you are going to be getting completely outclassed by a card that's up, up more here. Um, I don't know why it, I'm not seeing the 6600 on this particular chart I pulled up, but it's right around here. So um, it, it's better performance than a 1070. So it's looking like, like this will not be as strong as an RX 6600, according to their own chart here, as best as I can read into it. And it probably will, on the actual market, be priced higher uh, than, than, the, um, than the 6600. So something to think about, although this will have DLSS, although at 1080p, I don't know how much I'd personally want to use it, but on a low-end card, that might be a reasonable trade-off. And, you know, anyway. So we also have some more information here that I haven't already talked about on my community page, which is we are seeing from video cards, and this appears to be, as far as I can tell, just from their own sources. We have just learned that. Um, RTX 3050 reviews will be posted a day before launch. So NVIDIA is actually doing a good thing here. I like to see reviews before launch happens. Uh, which means that you can actually watch or read reviews before trying to buy one. Now, you're still going to fail to buy one unless you're a bot. But hey, you know what? <laughs> At least you can see the performance that you're not going to be able to purchase. Uh, unless you want to pay scalper prices, which like I said, I think are going to be at least four to five hundred dollars because um, I think this is just gonna slot in a little bit below a 3060. And the 3060s, you have to get lucky to find one for $600, and they're usually closer to sitting in stock around seven, 800, even 850, um, as far as where they'll actually sit in stock and be read readily available. So, hey, uh, you know, there you go. <laughs> and so basically we'll see reviews on the 26th and then it'll go on sale on the 27th. So interesting and I am I'm very interested to see how this performs and it'll, it'll be uh, great to get more GPUs out there that can only eventually help, hopefully. Although mining performance is really driving the prices and so hopefully we just see Ethereum eventually hit, uh, actually go to proof of stake and hopefully, um, you know, from my perspective, GPU perspective, hopefully we see crypto prices crashing as I think they have been doing lately. Now, we've got another thing going on here, which is uh, Tom Apisak, I have no idea if I pronounced that right, is a very regular leaker of GPU information on Twitter and tends to have good info. This is a not some random person without an established track record. And they found the Arc Alchemist GPU um, benchmarked in SIS software, or SI software, um, I don't know how to pronounce that uh, uh, official benchmarker, like they got uploaded online. And according to, depend, well, it depends on which particular measurement you're looking at, but in some of these things, like the quad float, it's crushing a 3070 Ti. In double float, it's, well, about almost doubling the 3070 Ti. In single float, it's, you know, losing to the 3070 Ti, but, you know, it crushed it on those other ones and it's not losing by that margin. And on half float, it's almost a tie. Now, I did find some other articles talking more about this uh, leak as a follow-up. Let me find it here. And according to video cards who looked into that leak in more detail, they found that the general purpose processing data actually scored higher than NVIDIA's RTX 3070 Ti GPU with a score of uh, 9,017.52, blah, 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 basically 7.7% faster than the NVIDIA card. Um, so what we're seeing here is confirming some leaks, and actually on the high end of the leaks that we've seen. Uh, there's been a lot of leaks, especially from Moore's Law is Dead over the course of the last several months. Has it even been a year now almost? I mean, it's been quite a while that we've been seeing Arc Alchemist leaks. And the leaks have pointed at the performance target of the high-end Arc Alchemist card competing with a 3070 and possibly even a 3070 Ti. 
And this leak does seem to put it there. Although the important thing to understand here is this is not a gaming benchmark. I don't know a lot about this benchmark, but it is not a gaming performance benchmark. So at whatever these calculations rely on, this car, the car does seem to be competing with the 3070 Ti, possibly beating it, at least on some elements, but that may or may not transfer to an actual gaming lead. My biggest questions for the Arc Alchemist GPUs are when are they actually gonna come out? We know that the quarter one of this year is theoretically when they're coming out, but I would say odds are that's going to be laptop discrete chips um, integrated into OEM laptops. I think that's what we're gonna see in quarter one. And it's probably not gonna be until quarter two that we start seeing the actual uh, desktop GPUs coming out. And if that's quarter two, well, it's probably quarter four, I, I would doubt quarter three, but quarter four when we actually just start seeing the entire next generation from AMD and Nvidia. Although I am very excited to see competition here. So, I mean, the, more players in this game, more GPUs out in the market can only be a good thing. Although, like I said, I really do think prices are just being driven by the crypto market. So whatever price these could be sold at, to project profitable crypto mining is the price they'll actually fetch on the market and they'll be sold out instantly at anything below that, which is kind of frustrating. So I really think, guys, that despite all the other issues going on with tariffs and taxes and shipping costs and manufacturing costs and supply issues and all of that, I, I, I really think that we won't see an actual solution to the GPU prices until either crypto crashes or mining on GPUs isn't really a thing anymore. But hey, I'm just a little bit pessimistic. What do you guys think about all this stuff? I've got to get back to work where I teach people not to make graphs that look like this one. Anyway, have an excellent day.